election coverage has become more and more like sports coverage. Who's winning and who's losing? Polls, electoral counts, delegates, fundraising, advertising, et cetera, et cetera, which is really interesting to consume for all of us, except it's not great for a democracy. The Electome is a platform that we created to analyze the public sphere conversation about issues in this election campaign. Deb Roy runs the lab. We had probably around a dozen people between data scientists, technologists, and journalists in very close collaboration with each other. Journalists think that the point of social media is to push out messages, their own articles and comments, and also for other people to push out prominent people they cover, politicians and so forth, particularly on Twitter. And they haven't really gotten involved in looking at social media and Twitter in particular as a new way of getting a readout on the public, of pulling actually a view of society and of people's opinions. This struck us as a promising alternative or new way of doing quote unquote polling. The laboratory at Social Machines at MIT, our lab, uh, has a unique access to the full Twitter firehose. We are the only lab in the US, actually in the world, that has access to the Twitter firehose. What that means is that we have access to every single tweet ever made going back to the beginning of Twitter. What the Electum does is it analyzes the Twitter conversation around the U.S. election using advances in natural language processing using deep neural networks. We are able to filter the billions of tweets that we have access to down to only those tweets that are about the U.S. election. Furthermore, we could divide those tweets into topics of interest. So not only can we tell whether a tweet is about the U.S. election, but also whether it's about a particular topic, immigration, guns, you know, women's rights, uh, things like that. On a weekly basis, uh, the system retrains itself to learn new phrases and terms that have entered the conversation about the election. This is very important because, especially for the election, the conversation changes so much. And uh, in order to really capture the whole conversation on Twitter, you need the system to adapt and learn. It was an important goal not to make this a merely academic exercise whose results were known months after the fact. So we were determined all along to publish along the way and share our findings with as large a public as possible. To do that, we linked up with a group of media partners, including the Washington Post, uh, CNN's Politics app, Fusion, and others. Um, we also published ourselves on the Medium publishing platform. We actually were a tech partner for the Commission on Presidential Debates, providing briefing books and even suggested questions based on our data uh, for the debate moderators. Uh, we even ended up creating an exhibit for the museum in Washington, uh, showing which candidates were associated with which issues over the course of the campaign. We did a story with the Washington Post. We looked at a poll that they ran during one week in March, and then we compared that to the issues that people were talking about in their own voices, otherwise sort of unwatched, unfiltered on Twitter. So in this poll where people self-reported to a pollster based off of the questions that they asked, uh, the number one most important issue was the economy, but we found that that barely registered on Twitter. On Twitter, people were actually talking about issues like foreign policy and national security and racial issues, um, which suggests each provides a different picture of the issues that are important to the electorate. This shows from our dashboard that in the week leading up to Election Day, Trump dominated the conversation. About 84% of all tweets about the election were about Donald Trump. I've just received a call from Secretary Clinton. She congratulated us. It's about us. Once the results came in, we went back to our data and we found some surprising and powerful results. Twitter was giving off signals that it would have been very valuable to know before the election. The electome found that the issues that dominated this election conversation were what we called fear and strife issues. So foreign policy, national security, threats from abroad, internal threats, terrorists, immigration, which was framed by Trump as a kind of a fear issue, and then third guns, which obviously is a fear and strife issue. The normal kind of bread and butter issues, 
that are traditionally dominant in an election, economy, jobs, domestic issues, health care, were not among the leaders this time, which was, which was really unusual and tells you a lot about the times in which we live. Many of the tweets about Trump obviously were negative. People concerned about him, horrified by him, and so forth. But when you looked at the people who were already on his side, we isolated this large group of nine million people by election day who exclusively followed Trump, did not follow Hillary. And those people spoke up in much greater numbers and had much greater enthusiasm for their candidate consistently in all situations, including when he was in trouble. The success of the electome analysis has bigger implications than just analyzing the political sphere. Uh, the fact is this semantic analysis for algorithms to read giant amounts of data and make sense of that could be valuable in multiple other areas of study, including things that are going on in the lab. Uh, we have a food project looking at the whole information ecosystem around food uh, which is drawing on some of the same technology and we're just beginning to think about the implications around the world for other things that it can do. I think what's clear about the electome is that technology and specifically in, in the form of social media has given everybody a voice to be heard and we now have the technology to hear them at scale and really understand what they're saying.